Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Mark here with Steve, and we're talking a little bit about... Uh, you're trashing Ken Burns? No, Ken Burns is awesome. Okay, I thought there was something like you're no, like you're getting no. down on Ken Burns here. Is no, I'm calling concerned. this episode "Making Ken Burns Obey." Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like everybody does like animated. Well, not everybody, but a lot of us use Ken Burns to animate on stills. And when I, you say Ken Burns, you mean what what Apple calls a Ken Burns effect of, of doing what he did in his documentary. Right, and to be right? clear, Ken Burns is a celebrated documentary filmmaker who, who, who back in the 90s came out with, he pioneered this technique of taking camera and doing motion control on old photographs of the Civil yeah. War. for his, Although it had been done bef it, before, but he sort of made it really well, popular, used, right? It, well, he did, because it's yeah. almost... Jazz and baseball, and then more recently Prohibition, and yeah, he's so, a master at it. Yeah, he's very good at it, and of course Apple co-opted his name for I, first iMovie and then right. Final Cut. But be that as it may, it's a very, very helpful tool, because it saves a lot of time. You don't have to keyframe. Yeah, so within Final Cut Pro 10, you can use the Ken Burns effect to do a move on a still image. Exactly. Okay. Now, if you understand the limitations of the effect and how to get around them, you could really, really make it do things that it wouldn't. you normally think you'd do. That's why I'm calling it, it making Ken ah, Burns so, obey. So you're going to take it kind of a step further. I'm going to than, take a step further. Okay, exactly. cool. Let's see what's going on so, here. So well, here's, here's an image that I shot of my daughter standing in a field. and. Um, I want to do a kind of push it a little move. Now, okay. I could do this with the, 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 the typical method of, of setting up keyframes and you know at, going to the uh, transform control and, and setting a scale. Uh, go ahead and just do it. I could set a scale keyframe and a position keyframe and then move this image, move the frame, move it over here, and then uh, go ahead and start uh, changing some things. I'll go ahead and play with the scale. So you move the playhead later in time. Yeah. And, then and now you're changing those values. And because you already set a keyframe before, it's automatically setting a new keyframe Correct. at this point in time. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially reframing and rescaling. The problem with this method is that it just produces really very stodgy, stiff animation. So you can see it's it's coming in and it just kind of lands harsh and abrupt. And, and you can try to, uh, you can attempt to try to, um, uh, to control that, um, let me go ahead and uh, switch to the um, transform tool. You can attempt to change the motion path and play with play with uh, these controls in here, but I, but I have to tell you. Yeah, if you right click you, on one of them, you can ease them you and can, smooth them. You can yeah. ease them, but mm -hmm. it's just you never really get the results you want. So if I go in here, you 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 can you, you right you can right click on these and you can smooth them, but no matter what you do, you're not going to get it to look right. Okay. So. I just abandoned yeah. this altogether, and, and I'm going to show you my Ken Burns trick. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset all these controls, and I'm just going to throw a quick Ken Burns on it. So I'm going to click down here, go to cropping, yes, and turn on Ken Burns. So there it is. And so what you do is oh, so you just click the Ken Burns button there, Ken right? Ken Burns effect. So now I have a start and ending frame. So the end ending frame. So green, I green assume, is the start. start. And red is end. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and frame. And you just drag those where you want and rescale them to the size that you want. Right. You, you mm -hmm. set your framing by just dragging the, you know, change, changing the framing and the scaling. And the, the beauty of Ken Burns is that when you play this back by using the little preview button, you'll notice the animation is like silky smooth and it has a nice ease in and mm -hmm. ease out. It's mm -hmm. just, it's very, very nice. It's okay. pleasing. So it just, it's a nice smooth ramp of acceleration right. and deceleration. Now, here's the thing about Ken Burns. It applies the entire Ken Burns effect is applied to the whole clip. The whole so clip. the speed of the Ken Burns effect is controlled by how long the clip is. In other words, the duration. So if you want a faster speed, you just shorten the clip. So in this case, now I have a much you know, a faster, a faster, move. faster move. But the move starts no matter what at the beginning of the clip and ends at the end of the clip Correct. no matter what. And what if okay. I wanted to freeze it? Right, right. What do you want to stop? Oh, yeah. right. So let's look, at, let's look at how to do that. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to split the clip at about here. I'm okay. Going to hit Command B, split the clip. Uh huh. And I'll go ahead and play this. You'll notice now I have two clips with the exact, the exact same, same move. Now, okay. The, the, the it's walk. twice as fast, but it's the exact same thing over. And here. the reason that is is when you split a clip with the Ken Burns effect applied, Funnel Cut doesn't know well what side of the edit do you want me to apply this. So I don't know. So I'm going to apply it to both sides. Apply to both. Okay. All right. So. So let's let's do a freeze. So I'm going to do is I'm going to move my play to the cut point and mm -hmm. then hit the left arrow key to back it off one frame. So now you're parked on the last frame of the first clip. Of the first clip. Okay. And I'm going to go to the edit menu mm -hmm. and I'm going to choose add freeze frame or yep. option option F. F. So boom. Love that thing. So like that. So now what we get 
is when I play this back, it gets a nice smooth, and it holds there. And I get a holds perfect, it holds okay. there, and of course, here we're going to get that again. We'll, we'll come back to that second chunk in a moment. Okay. But right now, I just want to show you that you get nice, clean, you use a freeze frame at the end, you get a nice, clean hold at yes, the end. Yes, yes. Which That's, frequently you want. You want to do a little move, but then you want to stop, because there could be a lot of narration going on. It doesn't need to move all. Now, this is how you control the speed, because let, what if you wanted to stop to happen at a specific point, like you mentioned, or a music cue or what have you? Would you roll the edit you point between the two? You, yeah, this is exactly. You okay. Just, just hit, Sorry, I was no, discussing. Press the, T, yeah. and you get the rolling tool, yeah. and you say, "Yeah, you're just rolling that." So you're making ah, the still okay. longer, but because you're shortening the Ken Burns, it's actually making it's it faster it on that That's side. That's nice. That's it's, nice. Because if it were keyframes, you would just be rolling right over those keyframes, oh, and they'd be gone. Uh, to me, keyframes are completely useless now. <laughs> I mean, for this sort of stuff, I mean, it's great. So I don't know if I go that far. But useless. <laughs> They're useless, I say. Okay. So so now I have this much faster zoom. And yes. It holds and there. it holds, yes. And I can have I can have that hold as long as I want. But now the yeah. point is, like you've you got very fast I, and easy control. Right now, in terms of this side, um, remember I, le I left that other chunk there for a right. reason because that's the repeated move. Yeah. Well, let's say I wanted to go from here and I wanted to pull back out to a different framing. Okay. So all yeah. I have to do is select this piece. Yes. Actually, switch back to the arrow tool. Select the piece. So you hit A to go back to the arrow yeah, tool. Yeah, arrow tool. Okay. And then go back to uh, Ken Burns. Yes. And here's the key. What you're going to want to do is use this button up here, which is a swap button. So that will reverse the animation? It reverses it. Okay, so then then the beginning of this animation should have exactly matched that freeze frame. It should exactly oh, cool. match the freeze cool. frame. Exactly. Very cool. So now if, if I play this, you'll see that it freezes. And then when it gets to the second part, it should start pulling back out. Well, actually, yeah. You could, it's, yeah, it does. It yeah. Back. Or, or you could have when you, you could reverse it and then just make the the red box different if you wanted a different move because you might want to move. It could be a group shot, right? And you right. want to move in on somebody and you're talking about them for a little while and then you want to move to the next person. So I could see it as a great way, like a, a class photo or something. And or, you can you, the fun doesn't end there. I can put another freeze frame in there and I can hold on another person in the group. Yeah, and, and move, move and move again. Else. Yeah. So you it's, could. That's cool. That's a very why, good trick. This is how we're making Ken Burns obey. <laughs> Good, right. I like it. And that's yeah, useful. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, like you said, you could change the end framing to something else. As long as that start frame. Just don't mess with the start frame because it, it matches your freeze frame. It matches yeah. the freeze frame. Yeah. And you can just keep on going like this. You can, like you said, just do whatever. You can do all kinds of different moves yep. within the shot. And move and then and have full flexibility, which you need if you're trying to match this to, narr to narration. This is a faster and easier way because you could do it with keyframes, but you've got to open, reveal the animation and drag the keyframes around. Right. And here you just do it all with roll edits. Uh, or ripple edits, depending on what you're trying to do, and you're, you're done. But the, and the, here's the important thing, Mark. Notice, again, the, the algorithm that they're using, it's so smooth, it just, it's just not, almost floats into the yeah. second keyframe. It's just, it's a nice, it just has a nice feel to it. It doesn't feel jarring like the key. That's right. why. Right. That's why I would never use keyframes to do this. And you can see how much faster it is. It's great. Yeah. I like it. So, Good there one. you have it. Ken Burns awesome. is under my control. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about how to get Ken Burns or Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion or these other apps under your control, check out RippleTraining.com. Yeah, we just you. released a new tutorial called Advanced Editing Workflows. Yes. Just re released it, and you can get it. And there's a whole section on, on how we do this. On how to do this. Yeah. Okay, Advanced Editing Workflows, RippleTraining.com. Cool. Steve, thank you. And thank you for, once again, watching MacBook Studio.